come see about me. I've been lonely too long. Baby, come see about me. All of those of us here who are the age of 50 and older, or maybe even younger, can say that we all benefited from an era in music which enlightened all of us. And that was the Motown era. And among all of those singers, those songs that was written and produced by Smokey Robinson and Lamont and Dozier, was some songs that was written for a group of young ladies who called themselves the Supreme. And all of us here know the songs that Donna Ross and the Supreme song with, with Stop. Stop in the name of love. Come see about me. All of those great songs that made a big charge. But this one song, Come See About Me, is a song in which the singer is singing that I'm hurting and I need you to come and check on me. And all of you here on this Monday morning, because you love Michael Gray, and you're here to check on him. You're here to check on him because you know that he's a person that gave a lot in your life. You're here to check on him because you know that he's a person that loved life. And so in coming and seeing about Michael Gray today, you're coming to say, I didn't come to see about the individual itself, but I come to see about the love and the joy that he gave and when we look at this text here, St. John the 11th chapter, we find here that Mary and Martha are weeping and moaning because of their brother Lazarus. They're weeping and moaning because Lazarus is dying. And so they sent a fax email to Jesus to tell him he's got to get to Bethany immediately because Lazarus, his friend, really needed him. But Jesus said he's got to die so that I can get the glory. And I know it's very difficult to understand how do you get the glory and the loss of a loved one. But Jesus is saying that your faith in me is far greater than what you have in the individual. And when Jesus showed up on the scene, he said, show me where you laid him. Show me where you put him down. Mm -hmm. And they said to him, Jesus, that he's dead now. That is nothing you can do. And Jesus showed up on the scene and said, roll the stone away. That in order for something to come alive in your life, mm -hmm. that something has to be rolled away in order for you to get the glory. Mm -hmm. And so something has to be rolled out of our depression, something has to be rolled about our sorrow, something has to be rolled away. And so he showed up on the scene and he said, roll the stone away. And when he showed up, he said, I'll call Lazarus three times. That I'm going to call him three times because I want to personalize who exactly I'm calling. In other words, the power of God is so strong that if Jesus would have said, come forth, then every dead man in the cemetery would have got up and walked. But Jesus personalized it for you. He personalized it for Michael. And when he called Michael's name, Michael came forth. He didn't come forth to die, but he came forth to live on and on. See, when we understand the realness of the transition of death is that absent with the body, present with God, is that there is no more suffering. There is no more pain. There is no more confusion. There is no more disappointment that Michael Gray now rests in a better place than all of us rest. That if he could see him right now, he would say, how do you like me now? We must understand that, that the situations that come in our life do not come to destroy us, but they come to enlighten us, to engage us, and to get us to a point that we will never hurt again. The very essence of living, the very essence of living is based on the essence of dying. The very essence of, of pain is based on the pain that Jesus shared on the cross. And so even the pain that you feel right now, the pain that you're hurting from right now, Jesus himself dealt with that on the cross. That was a song that Michael truly loved. It was called Love Hangover. 